everyone once again to the 36th annual Giants Award Banquet. Put your hands together for another amazing night. I'm Jathan Austin. And I am Beverly Austin. And if you would be so kind, just look at your neighbor real, real quick. Look at your neighbor and say, you look beautiful tonight. And if it's a man, if it's a man, if it's a man, say, you look good too, bro. <laughs> Everybody looks so amazing tonight. And we're going to have an amazing evening as we celebrate some amazing people that are doing absolutely extraordinary things here in the city of Grand Rapids, Michigan. Aren't you proud of our city? And so just before we get started, we would love to have everyone stand as we sing our Black National Anthem. And it is an honor to have Miss Lisa Knight. She's going to sing our National Anthem. You may take your seats. And it is a pleasure as Dr. Pink is coming to the stage, it is a pleasure to have Dr. Pink, the president of Grand Rapids College. And I am so honored to say here in Grand Rapids, he is the first black president of Grand Rapids Community College. Yeah. So honored, Dr. Pink. All right, good evening. Good evening. Come on now, you got to talk to me tonight. Yes, whatever you said. <laughs> I want to say thank you to all of you for being here tonight. I um, am uh, completely honored. I want you to also, again, give a big round of applause for Lisa Knight and the band over here. <laughs> uh, she's holding that microphone at me. Um, Anytime Lisa is around, I always uh, am uh, honored to listen to her music. She was, I was talking to her earlier tonight, and she was talking about whether she was going to sing her good songs or her bad songs. I said, sister, you don't have any bad songs. I don't know what those are. But we're happy that she's here. I also want you to say thank you to the Austins for their emceeing the event tonight as well. Thank you. A few thank yous and a few recognitions I need to give before we get too much further into our evening. First of all, uh, the most important person in the room to me, I want you to welcome my wife, Lori Pink. Please stand. <laughs> if 
fine woman. Uh, also, I want to say we also are honored tonight. I would be remiss as a president of a great college without recognizing the Board of Trustees of Grand Rapids Community oh. College. Would you board, board members please stand and be recognized at this time. Yeah, a couple back there. Uh, I'm, I'm going to ask, just indulge me for just a second. It's always a little shaky when you ask your bosses to do something like this, but if you could please remain standing, board members, because I also want, because I know there are several others in the room, any of our past board members, board of trustees at GRCC, would you please stand as well with our present board members? And let's recognize you as well. Also, uh, I would be remiss if we did not recognize any and all of our other elected officials in the room. Any other of our elected officials, please stand and be recognized at this time. When you turn to the first, uh, to page one in your program, you see a history there of the Giants Awards. And I encourage you to read that history because it talks about over 30 years of a history of this event dating back into the 80s with Dr. Pat Pulliam and the work that she and Cedric Ward did in, in coming together and realizing that here in the city of Grand Rapids, we needed to have some time, something, where we recognize the accomplishments and the things in our community in terms of our African-American people and those who we needed to especially recognize. And tonight we celebrate over 30 years, 36 years, of having this event where we take time out of a busy day and a busy schedule of each one of you. And we recognize people who have done extraordinary things in our community. And we're honored tonight to be able to come together and to do such. Tonight is a night of celebration. Lord knows we have so many things going on in this world that we get discouraged about. There are a lot of things that happen that you and I look at and we shake our head. And we look at and we do as the temptations saying, it seems like all the things happen, but the band plays on. But tonight, friends, we celebrate. I want you to forget about those things for a minute because I can guarantee you when you walk out those doors, they'll be waiting on you. I encourage you to forget about those things because tonight we celebrate. Tonight we recognize, tonight we honor, tonight we say congratulations to people who we say are well deserving of such recognition. So you put all those things behind you, you come into this place tonight, you fellowship, you laugh, you have a good time, you clap your hands and you say amen because we have people tonight who we get to celebrate. So we'll leave all those things outside and let's celebrate tonight those who have accomplished great things in our community. On behalf of the GRCC family, we say welcome and thank you for attending this Giants Banquet. Thank you. He sound like a preacher. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> if we could just for a moment bow our heads as we begin our invocation and pray our Father's blessing over this tremendous event. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this great opportunity to celebrate life and to celebrate the lives of so many that are doing such extraordinary things in the earth. We ask your blessings on tonight, that as we move forward through this evening, we will celebrate people and celebrate all that they have accomplished and continue to build on what you have given us with the hope inside of every one of us that life can be better. We thank you that these people are making life better. So bless this food and the nourishment for our bodies. In your name we pray, amen. And as dinner is served, really quickly, who likes giveaways? Anybody like free things, free things? I know I do, where are my ladies at? <laughs> so really quickly, I want you to look under your dessert plate, look under your dessert plate, and if you have something, I want you to kinda holla. <laughs> <laughs> if you have something under your dessert plate, look under the plate, under the dessert plate, under the dessert plate. Y'all feel like I'm pranking y'all, don't y'all? This really might be a prank. 
under your dessert plate. All right, I need you to holla. <laughs> All right, who else got something under their dessert plate? Anybody else? All right, in the back, anybody else? All right, good, anybody else? Anybody else? Good, so what I want you to do is, not now, say not now. Not now. After the banquet, I want you to take that ticket and go out to the table and we have some amazing gifts for you. So go ahead and enjoy your food and we'll be back with you very soon. Lisa Knight and a league of our own is going to play as you enjoy your dinner. I hope you all enjoyed your food. It looked delicious. I wish I could have eaten mine. <laughs> and for those of you all who did get um, a, a, a ticket under your dessert, please remember, please remember to take that ticket out to the registration where you, st where you stopped when you came in to pick up your gifts. We have some amazing gifts, amazing gifts, amazing gifts. And so really, really quickly, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> y'all know how we do in school. That's how we get y'all attention. <laughs> so if you can look at the screen, we have some amazing gifts on this evening. Um, we really want to thank George Bayard of Bayard Art Consulting and Frame Shop. We want to thank Kent County Conventions Area Arena and Authority. And we want to thank SMG for the outstanding gifts that you will receive. So please do not forget to go out and claim your gifts. And so while we're doing giveaways, we just received another amazing, amazing giveaway from Mr. Mike Lloyd and Broadway Grand Rapids. <laughs> so here's what I would like to do. Here's what I would like to do. And, 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 and so because this is a soul evening and, and we're, we're like family in here, I really want to celebrate a birthday. I would like to give these tickets. It's two tickets to, what is the two tickets to? Let's see, March 6th, March 6th, opening night, Bodyguard with Deborah Cox. Yeah. All right, we are ready to begin the scholarship and award presentation. Come on, put your hands together. So coming to the stage, and I know you all are ready, this is what you all have been ready for. And so we are so excited to bring to the stage Miss Laura Moody, GRCC Faculty Nursing Department. Laura is going to present the Milo Brown Scholarships. Give her a huge round of applause. It is indeed an honor once again to stand before you this evening on behalf of my brother Michael B. Johnson. Can you wave your hand, Michael, with Milo Brown and my son Kendrick? We're going to be passing out the awards this morning, this evening, and we're looking forward to see what our young students will be doing in the future. Our first recipient is Miss Melissa Jones. She is majoring in practical nursing. Her career plans after GRCC, GRCC is to use the skills she has learned to help in the Grand Rapids community. She currently works with the elderly population and would like to continue that work by becoming a home care nurse. And in the future, her plans is to go back to school and obtain her RN degrees. Her favorite quote, put God first, and you'll never be last. Please join me in congratulating Ms. Melissa Jones. recipient is Mr. Tyrone Hawkins. He is a proud member of GRCC's Alpha Beta Omega. 
He is in the Leadership Development Program. Tyrone is majoring in culinary arts, and his career plans after GRCC is to attend Grand Valley State University, or Ferris State University, to further his education in nutritional services. His dream job is to become a dietitian working in a hospital or a senior living community. His favorite quote is, reading is the gateway, skills that make all other learning possible, Barack Obama. Please join me in welcoming Mr. Tyrone Hawkins. Now is the time we'll be waiting for. I'm gonna have Michael to come join me on stage here. This is an exciting evening for our Junior Giants, the Leadership Scholarship Awards. First we have Ms. Binti Abdi. She is receiving the Cedric Ward High School Leadership Scholarship. Binti is a senior at Grand Rapids Union High School. Upon graduation, she plans to enlist in the military. While taking online, online courses from Davenport University to earn her bachelor's degree in cyber defense. After earning her degree, Binti plans to travel overseas to pursue a master's in political science from Dar es Salaam University and her dream is one day to become Prime Minister of an East African country. <laughs> Binti currently holds the position of President of the Grand Rapids Union High School National Honor Society. She's a member of the Mayor's Youth Council, student representative for the Grand Rapids Board of Education, and named the cadet, the cadet of the Year for 2016-2017. Binti is the proudest of her role in, as a battalion commander for Union JROTC program. She is only the fourth female in the last decade to hold this title. She is commander over 110 students. One of her favorite quotes is, until the lion learns to write, every story will glorify the hunter. Please join me. Our next recipient is Mr. DeAndre Bridgman. He is receiving the Dr. Patricia Pullman College Leadership Award. DeAndre is a psychology major at GRCC and is planning to transfer to Grand Valley State University to receive a bachelor's degree in psychology. He is passionate about working with at-risk youth. DeAndre will also pursue a master's degree in higher education and administration to be able to develop behavioral interventions for youth. DeAndre also plans to start a counseling business for current educators who work with youth to share his experience and knowledge on effective ways to engage the community and communication about our youth at risk. He is also working on a book titled Art, a guide of educators who work with at-risk youth. He also plans to continue developing his youth development program called Dre Inspires, which focuses on inspiring youth of all ages through mentoring, speaking, holistic development, and connect at-risk youth with a resource that will help them create opportunities for success. One of his favorite quotes is, the goal is not to live forever, but to create something that will. Please join me in congratulating 
DeAndre Bridgman. Thank you. Wow, they made me feel like I need to go do more. Yeah. <laughs> Outstanding job. Let's give them another round of applause. Well, it is that time, and we are so excited to acknowledge again that this is our 36th year of our Giants Award. That deserves some huge applause. Do we have any previous Giants in the room? Any previous Giants in the room? If you are here, would you please stand? Any previous Giants in the room? Come on, that deserves a huge round of applause. And I'd like to shoot my hand up. <laughs> I was a Giant Award recipient last year, such an honor. So I know what you all are feeling. You're probably super nervous but it's gonna be okay. <laughs> so we also want to thank those that really made this vision and created this program to make it possible. Dr. Pat Pulliam and Mr. Cedric Ward, let's please respond by giving them a big ovation for their vision for our city. All right, it is time now for us to move forward as we get ready to talk about the giants that will now receive their awards in the room. Anybody excited? I said, anybody excited? You know, y'all kind of stuffy, you know. You, I know you're sharp and you look beautiful, but it's all right to smile. Look at your neighbor and smile at them. However many teeth you got left, whatever color they are. If you got 32, 12, 16, gray, yellow, green, or blue, they're yours. You paid for them, smile. <laughs> As a pillar of advocacy in the community, the Hugh Martin Hugh Robinson II has worked in the justice field for nearly 20 years with an Association of Arts from Grand Rapids Community College and a Bachelor's of Science in Political Science from Illinois State University, Hugh has used his background and expertise to support our youth and fight for justice on their behalf. He believes that justice begins with empowering our youth for productivity and a successful future. Hugh currently works as the Assistant Superintendent of the Kent County Juvenile Detention Facility managing the day-to-day -day operations of the facility and actively serves on the Grand Rapids Police Policy and Procedure Review Task Force. He is also the chairperson of the Grand Rapids Police Civil Appeals Board. Hugh serves as a youth specialist in the Kent County Juvenile Probationary Detention Center as a juvenile probationary officer for the Kent County 17th uh, Circuit Court Family Division. He was founding member of the Kent County Human Trafficking Task Force. As a member of Kappa, Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity, he oversees the Kappa excuse me, program and designed to help young men grow, receive, and develop their leadership talents. Furthermore, he has served as the head football and trash coach for Creston and Ottawa Hills, among others. Hugh has dedicated his life to mentoring, empowering, and advocating for success of the youth of our community. He is highly respected by judges, administrators, and the community at large for the impact of his work. For these reasons, it is our honor to present the Hugh Martin Robinson II with the Floyd Skinner Justice Award. Good evening. I would like to take a moment to thank the Creator and all of His many names for allowing me to exist in His grace and mercy. I stand before you a humble man of African descent who has been blessed with the willingness to serve. I am the son of Joycelyn Joseph Robinson, husband to Amina, father to three jewels, Tempest, Yasmin, and Sunel, and grandfather to Rihanna, Tiana, and Raymond Jr. 
My earliest memories regarding examples of fortitude and service were riding in a car with my grandfather, Richard Henry Joseph, and witnessing his desire to answer the call of duty, which was serving the people. Personal experiences and battles waged on my behalf to make sure opportunities that my mother believed that I deserved would not pass shaped my resolve to do what I was reared to do, which in its simplicity is the focal point of our collective struggle, liberation. I stand firmly on the shoulders of champions like Floyd Skinner, who through the scales of justice sought to liberate the mind, body, and soul of his community. It is my privilege to receive the Floyd Skinner Award because he sought, believed, and fought for justice. Outstanding, outstanding. To our next honoree, Mrs. Christina Johnson. She received her Bachelor of Science degree in criminal justice and master's in educational leadership from Grand Valley State University. She also graduated from the Kalamazoo Police Academy and has been a sworn police officer for over 25 years. She is currently a few classes from completing a master's degree in counseling and organizational learning. Mrs. Johnson is a member of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority, ooh, which is a public service organization of more than 300,000 members. She has spent her entire career in law enforcement with a special commitment to the safety and security of our youth. In addition to working for Grand Rapids Public Schools for almost 30 years, she also worked as a police officer for Grand Valley State University and Grand Rapids Public Schools. Mrs. Johnson is currently the Sergeant Supervisor for the Public Safety Department at Grand Rapids Public Schools, where she is responsible for hiring and training all security officers, overseeing compliance, and providing professional development for officers. As an outspoken and critical advocate for youth, Mrs. Johnson was selected to be on the superintendent's transformation plan as it relates to culture and climate. As a result, she wrote a school safety manual and developed training programs that have strengthened the district's awareness of school safety and security, including the district's first safety leadership academy that it's currently being modeled and used by districts all around the country. She has also developed teaching, educating, and mentoring programs whereby every student that is expelled or placed on long-term suspension will receive support that they need to return to school and succeed. Ms. Johnson has received numerous honors, including the Department of Merit Award on five occasions. In 2009, she was elected by her peers as the Officer of the Year for her work in developing and establishing the district's training and compliance unit. She is currently the Midwest Regional Director for the National Association of School Safety and Law Enforcement Officials. She served as the co-chair for the National Association of School Safety and Law Enforcement National Conference, where she was later elected as the regional director for the organization, serving as the representation for the entire Midwest. In addition to advocating for the rights and safety and security of our youth, Ms. Johnson gives herself tirelessly and generously to in supporting the welfare of others. She also created a job opportunities for college students and opened up her home and contributed financially, personally, to countless individuals and families. For these reasons, she has demonstrated essence of the Walter Cole Public Service Award and is our honor to acknowledge her for her contribution and service in this community on tonight. Good evening. It is such an honor to be receiving the Walter Cole Award. 
I am pleased, honored, and humbled to accept this award and to join past recipients who I have long admired and respected. I would like to give a salute to all this year's nominees who have made an incredible contribution to the city of Grand Rapids. In addition, I would like to thank Herschel and Julia Turner for nominating me for this award and to the Giant Selection Committee for considering me. I truly give honor to God and the grace that I have been given throughout my entire life, for without God's grace, no accomplishments in my life will be possible. Allow me to add just a little perspective on my life and why and how I started my journey in law enforcement. Approximately 45 years ago, my oldest brother at the age of 15 was killed by a police officer. At the time, I was only 12 years old and did not understand how a police officer could commit such a tragic act against a young child. That incident impacted my life to the point that after this incident, I lost interest in school and did not trust law enforcement. And for the most part, my family and I wanted nothing to do with any parts of law enforcement in our community. However, the God I serve is a good God, and he not only healed me, but he healed my family and put me on the path to working as a certified police officer at Grand Rapids Community College and now as a public safety officer for the Grand Rapids Public Schools for the last 32 years, an assignment that I am very proud of and have enjoyed each and every day. Having become so involved in helping to keep students safe, it led me to another great opportunity to serve as a regional director of the National Association of School Safety and Law Enforcement where I have an opportunity to impact the lives of students, not only in Grand Rapids, but now on a national level. It has become so important to me to not only be involved and active locally, but also on the national level to help impact the change that is needed to keep our schools and communities safe. This journey not only took me to Grand Valley State University to major in juvenile justice, but it also led me to the police academy where I was the only African-American female in the class. So once again, I would like to say thank you for this opportunity. I am truly honored. Let us all continue to work together to support each other and help grow the community of Grand Rapids into a city of understanding and a city that truly understands each other culture differences. A huge thank you to Mrs. Teresa Weatherall Neal, superintendent of the Grand Rapids Public Schools, and to the thousands of GRPS students parents, co-workers, staff, and the community members for allowing me to grow and develop into the person I am today. For those who have touched my life and who have allowed me to touch your life, I am grateful for all you have done and allowed me to do. And a special thank you to my family and friends and my spiritual leaders and advisors, Bishop Dennis McMurray and Reverend Jerry Bishop, and to my sorority, Delta Sigma Theta, this would not have been possible without all of your support and prayers. And finally, I would like to thank my mother, former Benton Harbor Mayor Emma Hull, my siblings, my three loving children and their spouses, my two grandchildren, and last but surely not least, my husband, Larry Johnson, for his love, encouragement, leadership, and support in allowing me the opportunity to pursue my dreams. I love all of you. Thank you. Come on, put your hands together for Miss Christina Young Johnson. Dr. Valencia Agnew is the owner of Adolescent and Family Behavioral Health Services, a private practice that offers counseling to all ages, specializing in dialectal behavioral therapy for individuals suffering with mood dis dysregulation, intense emotions, bipolar, borderline personality, trauma, depression, and anxiety. Her practice is the only accredited comprehensive program of this nature in West Michigan. Clients come for her services from all over the state of Michigan and beyond. Her clients refer to her as the best. 
Dr. Agnew started her practice independently in 2012 with just 69 clients. In just five years, her practice expanded to seven therapists, two interns, 273 clients, and it's growing daily. Dr. Agnew, she leads by example. She is selfless in her efforts and unafraid of self-sacrifice. She is always willing to roll up her sleeves and do more than she's asked to for others. She leans on her advisory board for coaching and counseling as she is always seeking ways to improve her service and outreach. Dr. Agnew is a strong believer in giving back to the community. Therefore, all of her therapists are required to do a certain amount of community outreach hours per week, per month. Every month, they conduct presentations to schools, doctor's offices, and hospitals. They reach out to junior achievement programs, teachers, counselors, and school administrators to make sure they have the resources needed to support children in their care. She provides awareness ribbons and wristbands throughout the year, volunteers at community mental health events, and she provides monthly newsletters with general mental health information to reach out to, to those who need support. Prior to starting her private practice, Dr. Agnew's first career was an accountant. Wow, what a difference. She's later decided to pursue her dream of becoming a clinical practitioner, and she went back to school and earned her PhD in clinical psychology. Her accountant degree and background has been very, very valuable for her business practice. Dr. Agnew has appeared in magazines, radio shows, and she's won many awards, including Grand Rapids Business Journal Top Women Owned Business Award in 2017. She is known for her passion, humility, compassion, and her commitment. She is truly a giant in our community and exemplifies the characteristics of the Eugene Browning Medical Award. Please look at the screen. I would like to thank the Giants Awards Committee for honoring me with the Eugene Browning Medical Service Award. I never imagined I would be standing among you as a giant. I have known all along that I have sat on the shoulders of giants and that giants have paved the way for me, but never imagined being one. Tonight, I am thankful for the people who have changed that perspective, and I humbly accept this award. I thank God who continues to do exceedingly and abundantly above all I can ask or think. I thank Faye, who mentioned the awards to the women who nominated me. My heart is overwhelmed with the love I feel from the people who work closest with me, and speak so confidently about me. Thank you, Geneva and Paige, for nominating me. I am thankful for the therapists at Adolescent and Family Behavioral Health Services. Your compassion and commitment to the vision help make the acceptance of this award possible. Our clients allow us to serve them. They trust us to walk a sometimes very painful journey with them as they face the stigma of mental health with courage and determination. I am thankful for my amazing family, my husband, Darren, my children, Vincent, Paige, and Cardi have been phenomenal. Their support, determination, and drive make me want to be better. I am thankful to have had a mom who taught me and demonstrated how to stand strong during difficulties and to never give up. She pushed me to be the best version of me and she celebrated my successes more than anyone. Most importantly, she taught me to stay humble and put God first. I recognize others have also contributed. My siblings, my aunt, Billy Farms, who invested in my education when I was four years old, my extended family and friends. Every giant has cheerleaders. And there is my advisory board, Christ Temple Global Ministries, Apostolic Faith Church, and Life Center. Every giant needs to hear words of life that empower and heal. Thank you to Dr. Berg, who took me under her wings, nurtured me, and expressed her confidence in my clinical skills. She taught me to embrace the greatness of those around me and to appreciate the gifts placed in me. This award is a result of collective efforts. 
I believe we can all be giants. Every single one of us was placed on this earth with purpose and to fulfill that purpose in a way no one else can. Whether that thing seems big, too intimidating, or small, insignificant, don't let where you are stop you from where you want to be or where you were called to be. Like I said, I didn't always see myself here. I'm so grateful the people around me did. I'm grateful for the lives that I have been able to help change. Whatever you were called to do, there are people who are waiting on you, people who need you. In whatever way you can, be a giant today. Thank you. Dr. Agnew. Look at your neighbor and say, somebody is waiting for you to be great. All right. Isn't this awesome? This is awesome. Renee Williams, the WW Plummer Humanitarian Award. Miss Renee Williams is a native of Detroit and has resided in Grand Rapids for the last 18 years. She is a graduate of Wayne State University and a proud member of Word of Faith Christian Center. Ms. Williams has worked over 24 years on her platform of economic empowerment for communities of color. Through her leadership, approximately 20,000 undeserved individuals and businesses have received financial education and technical assistance. Ms. Williams started her financial career as an investment equity research analyst in Detroit. She joined Huntington in November of 2002 to launch and develop Huntington's Wealthy Street branch in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Under her leadership, the location became Huntington's number one branch in the entire company. In 2007, she had moved to Huntington's company development group as a regional community development manager for West Michigan's area. Her territory has expanded, included all of Michigan, as well as Illinois and Wisconsin. Ms. Williams has launched hundreds of economic empowerment programs and 170 million in affordable housing, low income housing tax credit, financing 100 million of which was in Grand Rapids, Michigan. She has also helped to launch Huntington Bank's 25 million micro lending small business commitment to the state of Michigan, 10 million directly to benefit West Michigan, in homeowners, businesses, entrepreneurs, and residents of Flint and other counties. She desires to see a permanent sustainable economy and a transformational of the local business and residents of Michigan. Ms. Williams has provided approximately 2,000 hours of service to the community, teaching financial education classes to both youth and adults, helping small businesses and entrepreneurs understanding banking and preparing them for financial success. In 2011, she launched Huntington's involvement in junior achievements, the JA for a day education sessions through the partnership of over 12,000 undeserved students in Michigan have benefited from this program. She received Grand Rapids, uh, she received a galvanized Huntington's community volunteer efforts along her fellow Huntington colleagues resulting in a significant community-wide impact. Ms. Williams is a member of Delta Sigma Theta sorority. Because of her hard work, compassion, and dedication, and impact of the greater Grand Rapids community, Ms. Williams is our honor and privilege to present to her the W.W. Plummer Humanitarian Award. Please. In accepting this award, I would be remiss if I did not first thank the two individuals who nominated me, 
my dear friend and community partner of 15 years, Commissioner Sunita Lanier, and John Irwin, president of Huntington Bank, my mentor for 15 years as well, and a great example of inspiration, dedication, and commitment to faith in the workplace. Special thanks also to others who demonstrate compassion for community, especially for those who are less fortunate, and they drive me to do the same. First, my father, Ronald Williams, a Vietnam veteran who is here this evening and continuing even at this age to reach out to fellow veterans who are in need. My pastors, Thomas and Adrian Wilson of Word of Faith Christian Center, who continue to do the work of spreading the humanitarian efforts that come from knowing Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And all of our 1,200 Huntington colleagues in West Michigan, who continue to do the work and volunteerism every day in the communities in which we serve in. I'm indebted as well to Grand Rapids Community College President Bill Pink and the Bob and Alicia Woodrick Center for Equity and Inclusion. Thank you for your ongoing commitment to diversity and inclusion, especially at these key times in the Grand Rapids community. Finally, I would like to encourage all who are in attendance here tonight to continue to do the work in our Grand Rapids community. We all have a role to play, and that role at times can be very tiresome. But in the end, what we are doing can drive economic empowerment for people like myself who stand here tonight, not just as a recipient of a Giants Award, but a recipient of the great work of people just like you as I was a child or a student, an employee, or a person just walking every day through the community. I was treated with respect, and now I'm able to do the same thing for others. So please continue the work. It's an honor to stand alongside you. Ms. Renee Williams. Outstanding, outstanding. Wayne D. Wilson, Milo Brown Business Award. Mr. Wayne Wilson earned his bachelor's degree in economics from Morgan State University and his MBA from R.H. Smith School of Business from the University of Maryland. In addition, he attended the Gateway to Business Management program through Tuck Executive Education at Dartmouth. He is an active member of Omega Sci-Fi fraternity and serves as the current Basileos of the Lodify chapter of Grand Rapids. Mr. Wilson began his career at Priority Health in October of 2010 and immediately raised the bar. He, he accumulated numerous accomplishments while employed there, eventually becoming the senior vice president of government markets. During this time, Mr. Wilson generated $1.5 billion in government markets revenue. He, is a, he, he achieved the highest annual percentage growth in the nation for Medicare Advantage plans with members of 50,000 or more for the past five years. He also built a new subsidiary in 2016 to address the emerging market of Medicare Advantage outsourced services. Impressively, he achieved 52% market share for 2016 in the individual Medicare Advantage market, exceeding all of his competitors. Mr. Wilson also led the Medicare team to achieve a 4.5 out of a five-star rating six out of seven years, making it one of the most successful Medicare Advantage plans in the United States. Wow. 
Prior to joining Priority Health in 2010, Mr. Wilson spent about 20 years in the pharmaceutical sector. His achievements in sales are reflected in the numerous awards he earned for exceeding expectations. Mr. Wilson is a man who realizes that success takes hard work and is not one to accept the status quo as a reason for continuing a course of action. He has been a mentor and a sponsor to countless professionals, helping them advance their careers and move up the corporate ladder. He is a member of the Association for Community Health Plans, Vice President of the Board of Campfire, trustee to the Grand Rapids Community Foundation, and was a board member for John Ball Zoo for two years. Because of his many accomplishments and contributions to the Grand Rapids community, it is our honor to present the Milo Brown Business Award to Mr. Wayne Wilson. Please look at the screen. First and foremost, I give honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as I have this opportunity because of him. I thank Lyman and Glenda Parks for their nomination. Through the Giants Awards Committee, I am truly honored to receive this award. As a kid born up in the projects of Philadelphia, I knew poverty up close and personally. However, my parents were determined not to allow me to use my surroundings as an excuse. They established an expectation for giving back to the community. In my daily endeavors, I strive to exceed their expectations. Also, thank you to Spectrum and Priority Health for giving me a platform to use my voice to stress the importance of providing access to excellent health care for all of our community. Thank you to my children, Madison, McKinley, and Bryson, for allowing me to devote extracurricular time to give back to our community. Finally, the phrase, the wind beneath my wings, describes my wife, Yvonne. She has supported my career and community efforts in so many ways, including relocating five times and putting her career as an exceptional attorney aside to allow me to take on greater career challenges. I would not be here without you. Please give her a huge round of applause for Mr. Wayne Wilson. Come on, you can do better than that. Put your hands together. We're supposed to be celebrating. All of these are amazing accomplishments. Rondo Cooper, the Phyllis Scott Activist Award. Mr. Rondo Cooper is well known throughout the greater Grand Rapids community for his personal and professional commitment to enhancing the lives of others through counseling and activism. He serves as the director of Upward Bound for Grand Rapids Community College and has over 27 years of experience working with youth in need of mental health services, academic opportunities, and reentry after incarceration. He often ventures into dangerous spaces while advocating for others and was subject to being locked down during one of his prison visits. Mr. Cooper is often referred to as Super Coop. <laughs> as he is skilled in recognizing people in need from a distance and will stop what he is doing to go and sit with them and let them know that they matter. He believes that everyone deserves a fair chance in life and works devotedly to help vulnerable populations. He works with social service agencies, law enforcement officers, judges to advocate for their fair treatment and resources for those who are unable to fight for themselves for organizing college visits and administrating practical skills classes like tying ties and interview training, Mr. Cooper is always available for his students. He endeavored to broaden the worldview of his students by taking them to the symphony concerts, college visits throughout the country, and sponsoring leadership and, sponsoring leadership and network conferences. He makes his students believe in their capacity to thrive and to be great 
which is evident in the number of young adults who have succeeded as a result of the impact that he has had on their lives. Mr. Cooper travels throughout the country as a speaker and an advocate. He is a distinguished alumnus of the Aquinas College where he earned his Bachelor's of Arts degree and Western Michigan University where he graduated with the Master's degree in social work. It is truly an honor to present this year's Phyllis Scott Activism Award to Mr. Rondo Cooper. Please pay attention to the screens. Good evening. Tonight, I stand on the shoulders of many. I stand on the shoulders of giants. I stand on the shoulders of the giants that have come before me and those that are coming after me. That's what I do. Tonight, I stand on the shoulders of both my mother and my grandmother, Brenda Louise and Mary the Great Alexander, who both taught me the lesson that service to others was ultimately a service to a living God. They helped me to understand that you cannot serve God without first serving his people. Tonight, I stand on the shoulders of Elias Lumpkins, Dr. Patricia Pulliam, Dr. Walter Brame, and the late, great Carl Edward Smith, who showed me the revolutionary beauty of black consciousness and the sobering power of self-determination. I stand on the shoulders also of my great, great grandmother, Hattie Lafayette, who attended church and served her community until she was 112 or 114 years old. We're still trying to figure that out. When I asked my great, great grandmother the secret to her longevity, she smiled and proudly exclaimed to me, baby, when my husband died, I never let another man put his shoes underneath my bed. She taught me the lesson of perseverance. So, hello, hello? Barack? Obama? Hey man, I'm in the middle of my, yes, yeah, I'm in the middle, I told you I'd be in the middle of my, my giant speech. What? Yes, with your coals, listen, listen, when you barbecuing, make sure the coals are white first. Look, don't mess it up like last time. Right, right, right. Tell Michelle I said hi. All right, I gotta go, I gotta go. All right. Man, I'm sorry. In closing, I like to give an honor to God, whom is the head of my life. I like to thank GRCC and the Giant Selection Committee for their diligent work in selecting me for this honor. I'd like to specifically recognize the incomparable Sullivan family of Herman, Roz, Noble, and Alain for nominating me for this esteemed award. I'd also like to thank those who are up and coming giants and those who are existing giants like Robert Cuba, Inez Smith, George and Deborah Baird, and all those others in my life who never let me forget my purpose. I don't do shout outs, but if I did, I would definitely shout out my church, First Community AME, and the Brothers of Omega Sci-Fi, and the outstanding Grand Rapids Public School System. Last but never least, I would be literally lost without the tireless support from my dear loved ones of Vicki Joby Cooper, Sons Asa and Langston, they are literally the wind beneath my wings. Brother Bishop, finally, I govern my life by the African principle of Mbutu. This simply means and simply translates to I am because we are. And Brother Elamine, if the saying is true that it takes a village to raise a child, then I certainly stand in testament of that truth of this community's truth, because I'm standing before you, ready to continue to serve. Thank you. Mr. Rondo Cooper.
He just broke out the barbecue on us. <laughs> and your grandmama said, don't put another man's shoes under your bed. That's how you live long. I need some more details on that. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to leave you with nothing like that. Right. I'm just, I'm I sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. What just I was, I was trying to figure out how to keep your shoes under that long right. time. Okay. Mr. Bill Mann's William Glenn Trailblazer Award. Yes. Mr. Bill Mann's is an exceptional leader. Since 2013, Mr. Manns has served as the president of Mercy Health St. Mary's, as the first African American to lead a health system in West Michigan. Yes, outstanding. Mr. Manns has blazed an admirable and inspirational trail. His high energy, results-oriented leadership style has resulted in significant improvements in business performance and physician staff satisfaction for several hospitals. Under his leadership, St. Mary's remains a top performer among the hospitals within the national Trinity Health Systems. In addition, the organization receives numerous awards for its neurological science department and nursing programs and continues to solidify its presence in the greater Grand Rapids community. During Mr. Mann's tenure, St. Mary's has increased its number of federally qualified health systems from two to five, enhancing its ability to provide high quality care to the most vulnerable populations. Brown and Clater, the clinic that resides in the heart of the African American community, has seen increased capacity, increased community programming, and the addition of social workers and community health workers. A hallmark to Mr. Mann's time in Grand Rapids has been the noticeable increase in diversity within the Mercy Health System, which has recognized by the White House in 2016. Now, Mercy Health boasts that one out of three hires is a person of color, and the organization has implemented a new strategy that aims to remove implicit bias from the hiring process. This process serves as a national model. Mr. Manns received his BA in psychology and his master's in health service administration from the University of Michigan. Outside of his work commitments, Mr. Mann serves on numerous boards and acts as a mentor to several African-American males, along with his lovely wife, India. His ho he hosts gatherings and promotes equity and social justice throughout the greater Grand Rapids area. Please join us in a huge round of applause as we present this year's William Glenn Trailblazer Award to Mr. Bill Manns. Please look at the screen. I firmly believe that God puts you where you're supposed to be, when you're supposed to be there. I feel blessed that he's guided my steps throughout my entire life. First, I want to thank the Mercy Health Board of Trustees. They took a chance on me as a new president. I also want to thank the committee that voted for me. I'm blessed to work with a wonderful senior leadership team and an amazing group of colleagues at Mercy Health. While I'm getting this award, without their support and guidance, I wouldn't be here today. I want to thank my family, all of them. I spend far too many hours at work. My son, we moved him from the Bay Area of California, probably the most diverse place on earth, to Grand Rapids. After some initial struggle, I've enjoyed and been inspired by watching him find his voice. And then there's my smart, beautiful, and lovely wife, who is on every board known to man. She's been very active in this community and keeps me both humble and inspired because, as she says, the struggle's real. And finally, my mom. She's a blessing in my life in so many ways. As leaders, we often don't talk about fear as an emotion. Don't get me wrong, some leaders exploit it for their own political gain, but very few actually talk about being scared themselves. That's a level of vulnerability that's uncomfortable for many of us. Well, when I think about trailblazers, the very notion of being a trailblazer implies doing something that no one else has done. And by its very nature, it generates some anxiety. Well, whenever I get scared, and I tr mean truly scared, I do what many senior leaders should do. I call my mom. And it's my mom who reminds me 
of 2 Timothy chapter 7, verse 1. God does not give us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-discipline. It's after this gentle reminder from my mom that I realize, through him, I can do anything. Thank you for this award. I will cherish it for the rest of my life. Please give a huge round of applause to Mr. Bill Manns. He has to be one of the coolest men on the planet. Do y'all see how he walks? <laughs> That's confidence right there. Gertrude G. Kroon. Gertrude, known as Gert Kroon, is the definition of a servant leader. Raised in Birmingham, Alabama, Ms. Kroon grew up in the orbit of the civil rights movement, risking life and, retri and retribution as a student leader in the civil rights movement. She was arrested several times for her involvement with the movement and once led a march with the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. Ms. Kroon was the vice president of the student body at Knoxville College, where she majored in political science. She later earned her master's degree in political science from the University of Tennessee. She also completed postgraduate work at Western Michigan University and Michigan State University. After relocating to Grand Rapids, Michigan in 1969, Mrs. Kroon continued her servant leadership. She has led numerous voter registration drives, served four years as the department chairperson in social science at Grand Rapids Community College, and has served in several leadership positions of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. I didn't stutter on purpose, I'm sorry. As program chair of the Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority National Program, Mrs. Kroom has organized many community service events and is responsible for the implementation of the sorority's signature program, Ascend a program designed to increase the life skills of high school students. Ms. Kroon is also leading the advocate in Grand Rapids for Affordable Care Act Enrollment, Alzheimer's Awareness, the Director of Youth Ministries at Brown Hutchinson Ministries, and one of the founders of the Grand Rapids Voter Education and Registration Committee. She is a frequent columnist for the Grand Rapids Times and has appeared as a guest on WZZM's Take Five Committee news show where the advocacy for voting rights and political involvement and social justice and the overall health of the African-American community. Ms. Kroon is a strategic thinker with the ability to bring groups together and to work towards a community vision. In this capacity, she has led and initiated the Michigan's Affordable Care Alliance, which enrolled over 125 people in Michigan's national and state insurance programs. Ms. Kroon has also collaborated with Chemical Bank to create a youth banking program at Brown Hutchison Ministries, where 40 young people have started savings accounts. Come on, put your hands together for that. That's amazing. From the time that Ms. Kroon was a young high school student in Birmingham, Alabama, until this day, she has been a force for social justice and positive change. While staying true to her strong religious and moral values, Ms. Kroon continues to devote much of her energy to ensuring people of our community have access to the right to vote, healthcare services, financial literacy, and educational opportunities. For these reasons, it is our privilege to present the Raymond Tardy Community Service Award to Ms. Gertrude Kroon. Good evening, my fellow Grand Rapids community members and all our visitors from near and far. Allow me to first thank the Giants Committee, especially Ms. Jennifer Smith, 
of whom I have had more conversations than I can recount. She is truly remarkable. Thank you to the organization which nominated me, my sorority, Theta Chi Omega Chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. But the gratitudes I want to extend include a number of individuals and groups which inspired me, encouraged me, and rewarded me for what I wanted to do in various United States communities and most recently in Grand Rapids. First, my deceased mother, who thought I could do anything I set my mind to. I often stop and ask myself, can I do this? It was she who allowed me at the tender age of 16 to join the Southern Christian Leadership Conference in Birmingham, Alabama, an arm of the Civil Rights Movement with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. at the helm. She allowed me to go to jail for the first time on Easter Sunday, 1963. The same time Dr. King was in jail and wrote his famous letter from a Birmingham jail, the SCLC's youth movement gave me the opportunity to learn leadership techniques, which led me back to jail once more in Birmingham and then in St. Augustine, Florida. Grand Rapids Community College is another institution which allowed me to be of service. In addition to teaching, the college allowed me to serve as chair of the social science department, from which I was given permission to create the first Grand Rapids inner city off-campus classes at the Sheldon Complex, where I taught classes in political science and which allowed students to attend class close to home with no parking problem. The Grand Rapids Education and Voter Registration Committee was the organization I used to spearhead my creation of subgroups to tackle the problem of informing and enrolling Southeast Side Grand Rapidians into the Affordable Care Act Insurance Program, also known as the Obamacare. Using the Grand Rapids Times, members of my sorority, my church, Brown Hutchinson Ministries, Planned Parenthood, and the aforementioned GREVRC, we utilize every possible welcoming site to enroll citizens. We could be found at beauty salons, Dickinson Elementary School, Brown Hutchinson Ministries, and the Gerald R. Ford Job Corps Center. We help to enroll hundreds of people, some of whom transferred over to Michigan's Medicaid program. This was one of the most important endeavors I have been connected with. But this was not my last pride and joy. The creation of Brown Hutchinson Ministries Youth Banking Program in conjunction with Chemical Bank on Bridge Street is still a source of pride. The program located at BHM has had as many as 40 youths over the three years of operation. I am blessed with my husband of over 49 years, my three daughters, and my three grandchildren. As my mother used to bellow out with limited singing abilities, if I can help somebody as I wander along my way, then my living shall not be in vain. Thank you. Miss Gertrude G. Kroon. She sounded so much better than I would if I would have tried to sing. <laughs> Lois Jean Thomas. 
the H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award. A native of Grand Rapids, Michigan, Ms. Thomas is an evangelist, psalmist, and a ministry leader who has a powerful anointing on her life that started at a very young age of six and has spanned over 60 years using her gifts of singing, preaching, and teaching the gospel to women, men, and children all over the country. Although she had opportunities to launch a national singing career, she used this gift to earn enough money to pay for her college education. She earns a bachelor's degree from Tennessee State University with a certificate in both elementary and secondary education. She earned a master's of arts degree in educational leadership from Western Michigan University. And she earned enough money singing to pay for her brother's college as well. Wow. Ms. Thomas taught middle school students in Grand Rapids Public Schools and DeKalb County in Atlanta, Georgia for over 37 years. She also continued ministering the word through the preached gospel of music as a member of Bethel Pentecostal Church, now known as One Church Empowerment Center, that I am now the pastor. That's not in here, but I just wanted to throw that in here. That's self-serving. That's probably kind of wrong, but anyway. Her voice. <laughs> was featured as a lead soloist for several albums featuring the church award-winning choir under the pastoral leadership of the late, great Bishop William C. Abney, my grandfather. <laughs> Ms. Thomas led the inspirational hundreds of congregations through the Ministry of Music. She has performed as a soloist on the nationally televised Bobby Jones Show and has worked with gospel singers Tremaine Hawkins, Vanessa Bell Armstrong, and the late great Reverend James Cleveland. She has also participated in numerous local theatrical productions, including several that featured the Robertson Players led by the late Cedric Ward. Mrs. Thomas created a gospel choir for students at the Gerald R. Ford Job Corps. She has been a mentor and a volunteer for Mel Trotter Ministries and the Grand Rapids Urban League. After a personal divine healing from cancer several years ago, Ms. Thomas has purposed her ministry on the power of prayer. She has served in numerous leadership capacities as a prayer warrior, as an evangelist for Shepherd's Army Ministry under the direction of Pastors George and Lois Anderson. Ms. Thomas has dedicated herself to Christianity, faith, and service. Her favorite scripture, is Psalms 118.17. I will live and declare the works of the Lord. Light, like the late H.C. Tolliver, she is always available to lend a helping hand and lift someone up, which makes her very deserving of the H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award. Please look at the screens. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. To God be the glory for the things he has done. I am, with heartfelt gratitude, honored to be nominated by Mrs. Brenda Moore for this prestigious award, the Reverend H.C. Tolliver Religious Life Award. Thank you, Brenda, for your confidence and faith that you observed about my ministry throughout the church community and our community at large. What is exciting about being a recipient of this award, Reverend H.C. Tolliver was my mother, the late Roberta Thomas, and our family pastor at Chulite Baptist Church. In addition, our family for a number of years served under the pastoral leadership of the late Reverend W.L. Patterson. At an early age, while attending True Light, this is where my biblical foundation in music ministry began under the tutelage of my sister, Vernita Ware Perry, my brother, the late Waco Ken Thomas, the late Ruth Patterson, Mrs. Tempe Hoskins, and Mrs. Mary Edmonds. Over the years, there has been many individuals who were trailblazers in nurturing my music and teaching ministry, 
and have made a great impact on my life. I am speaking of the late Bishop William C. Abney, Mother Lorraine Abney, and Minister of Music James Abney of Bethel Pentecostal Church. Musicians and songwriters such as Deborah Perry, Clinton Talbert, Troy Anderson, and countless others in the music industry. In closing, I want to thank my cousin, Precious Thomas, True Light Baptist Church Administrator, and all my guests who have joined with me celebrating this special occasion. In addition, I want to extend personal acknowledgement to my beloved pastors, Pastors George and Lois Anderson of Shepherd's Arm Ministries for their labor of love in preaching, teaching, and training, which has enhanced my faith and has strengthened my dedication and commitment in serving God's people. Finally, ministering to others, whether teaching or singing, provides personal satisfaction and spiritual fulfillment in helping people grow in their faith. Please give a round of applause to Mrs. Lois Thomas. Tap your neighbor on the shoulder, tap your neighbor on the shoulder, tap your neighbor on the shoulder, say, hey, we almost to the big one. <laughs> Carolyn Evans, Hattie Beverly Education Award. As the Assistant Superintendent of Curriculum, Carolyn Evans is a strong educational leader in the Grand Rapids, in the Grand Rapids Public School District and beyond. She has served in numerous capacities during her 37-year tenure in the Grand Rapids Public Schools. She started her career as an elementary teacher at Madison Elementary and was later transferred to Dixon Elementary where she served as a principal for eight years. Due to her accomplishments, she was promoted, just due to your accomplishments, you happen to get promoted, I love that. Due to her accomplishments, she was promoted to a position in administration as a reading curriculum specialist, executive director of elementary education, and chief academic officer. Approximately 10 years ago, she became the deputy, deputy superintendent of curriculum for Grand Rapids Public Schools. Due to her commitment and dedication to the, to the success of our youth, Mrs. Evans has served tirelessly with humility, never seeking recognition or a reward for any of the things she has done. Her only goal has been the success of the children of our community. Mrs. Evans has demonstrated unwavering commitment to serving the community around her. For 40 years, she has been a member of the Messiah Missionary Baptist Church she works with nonprofit organizations in, such as the United Way, the Student Advancement Foundation, and the, and the Student Advancement Foundation. Wise in her own right, Carolyn Evans has mentored young men and women. Carolyn Evans' leadership skills not only changed Dixon Elementary School for the better, it raised its performance scores and turned the school into a blue ribbon school. Dixon Elementary School became a staple for the Southeast community. Carolyn Evans directed to achieve 
adequate yearly progress across the elementary, middle school, and high school division for the first time in Grand Rapids history. She established a data review process that will eventually become a mandate by the state's priority school office. She also studied five years with the Harvard Change Group researching models of organizational change. All in all, this is just a few of her achievements. Carolyn Evans continues to look for ways to make sure that the Grand Rapids school system is a success. The fight for the education and the students in Grand Rapids is ongoing for Carolyn. Carolyn Evans exemplifies the classification for a giant. Her selflessness and willingness to put the educational system on a higher pedestal explains her commitment to giving back to our community. It is our honor this evening to present the Hattie Beverly Education Award to Miss Carolyn Evans. Please look at the screen. I am extremely grateful to be selected as the recipient of this prestigious Hattie Beverly Award. I'm humbled by the thought that this great committee could in any small way connect my work to such a great drum beater for education. There are so many individuals who have gone before me and who are currently laboring in the field of education and who will come after me who are so deserving. To all who were involved, please accept my sincerest appreciations. I would be remiss, however, if I did not pause and give honor to another woman, Helen Mary McElwee Johnson, my mother, a sharecropper's daughter, a domestic worker by trade, an individual who stood against the tremendous challenges and oppressions of a Jim Crow ridden society of the South. In spite of her challenges, in the 1960s, she mustered up the courage and the audacity to lay down her mop and broom to walk through the doors of 1331 Franklin, which was then Calvin College, and is now the Grand Rapids Board of Education where I am employed, and believed that she had the inalienable rights to be educated. Like many of the students that we serve, there are no great assertions and assumptions in research and literature about her potential contributions to society. In fact, by today's criteria, she would have been labeled an at-risk Title I student and placed in a subgroup. She had many disadvantages and no one touted of her worth. She had a lot of disadvantages and devoted a lot of effort just covering up the fact that she was a motherless child with many odds against her. But somehow she knew and she conveyed that education is the great equalizer. It is the capital needed to complete the human experience. It is a strong weapon of destruction against social injustices and inequities. It is the bomb that soothes and nourishes our individual and collective souls. It is through her example that my siblings and I learn that as the scriptures state, we must study to show ourselves worthy workmen unto God. It is through her that we learned of the transforming power of education. In closing, I further extend my appreciations to several groups and individuals, to the Grand Rapids Public Schools, the elected officials, Superintendent Weatherall Neal, 
and her cabinet for their courageous leadership, to the curriculum staff and department, to the staff, students, and families of this great community. They have provided innumerable life-changing experiences. To my family, Robin, Robert, who is unable to be here, and Jonathan and their families, my siblings, relatives, friends, and church families, you are my joy. And it is because of your prayerful support that I stand here today. I truly love you all. Thank you for being a blessing to me. To my husband of almost 50 years, Robert James Evans, my knight in shining armor, I love you. And I thank you for allowing me to love this community and district. You are my rock. And finally, to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, to you be the honor and the glory for the things that you have done. Thank you. Please give a huge round of applause to Ms. Carolyn Evans. You all need to stand up and do any jumping jacks? Y'all all right? <laughs> Almost there. Deborah A. McMillan. The Martha Reynolds Labor Award. Deborah A. McMillan received her bachelor and master's degree in elementary education from Michigan State University. Ms. McMillan has a courageous fighter for justice in a relenting advocate for equality, educational experience for every student in the public school system. Ms. McMillan worked in public education for 40 years. During her time as an educator, Ms. McMillan has, was elected to be a delegate to the Michigan Education Association and National Education Association Representative Assemblies. She served as the president of the board of directors for the Michigan Education Association for Financial Services and served as the vice president of the Lansing Schools Education Assembly. For every building she worked at, Ms. McMillan served as the LSEA building representative where she represented grievances and concerns to school administration. In this position, she earned the respect of the teachers and administrators for her fair, straight shooting and negotiation style. As an active member of the community, Ms. McMillan was a member of the delegate to Michigan Democratic Party and served on many national, state, and local campaigns. She's also a member of Jack and Jill of America and the Alpha Kappa Alpha sorority. Ms. McMillan may be most remembered for her courageous willingness to lead the plaintiff in a 2010 lawsuit seeking to return the money involuntary taken from school employees' paychecks. Unfortunately, <laughs> yes, yeah, celebrate that, that's amazing. Unfortunately, Ms. McMillan passed away on March 5, 2017 and was unable to see the conclusion of that trial. However, her efforts paid off as the Michigan Supreme Court ordered that over $550 million be returned to school employees. It is with great joy that we present the Martha Reynolds Labor Award to Ms. Deborah A. McMillan. Here to receive the award on her behalf is Charles McMillan. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Charles McMillan, and I was Deborah's husband. 
for nearly 44 years. Debbie died unexpectedly in March of 2017. I'd like to thank the individuals who nominated Debbie and the Giants Awards Committee for selecting her to receive the prestigious Martha Reynolds Labor Award. Debbie would be so humble and proud this evening. As a graduate of Ottawa Hills High School, I first met Debbie as a college freshman at Michigan State University. She was a graduate of Pershing High School in Detroit. As a child growing up in the 50s and 60s, Debbie witnessed and experienced the effects of racism and poverty on student educational achievement. When we moved to Grand Rapids, she found a position at the Grand Rapids Job Corps. Working at the Job Corps would change her life forever. There she observed that most of the students were having great difficulty with basic academic skills, so they were having problems learning a vocation or skilled trade or earning a high school diploma. She decided her solution to the problem was to improve early childhood education. She returned to college to obtain her teaching certificate and she worked as a teacher's aide at Sixby School. She also worked in early childhood education in East Lansing Public Schools and 28 years in the Lansing School District. Debbie truly believed that every child deserved a high quality public education. She further believed that it should not matter where a child started in life, but rather with a quality education and hard work that they could share in the body and wealth of this country. Debbie believed that all students deserve the best start as they began their educational careers, and she also knew that educators needed to be supported as they worked with the students. Debbie's professional relationship with education and labor included several leadership positions with the Michigan Education Association, the Lansing Schools Education Association, the National Education Association, and the MEA Financial Services Corporation, all while being a mom and a wife and a community leader in organizations such as Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, the Lansing Chapter of Jack and Jill, and the Democratic Party. Debbie stood up for what she believed was right. She hated injustice. When the MEA and the AFT School Employees Union filed a class action suit against the state where 3% of all school employees' paychecks were withheld in 2010 without their permission, Debbie courageously stepped forward to sign her name on as one of the lead plaintiffs. Debbie fought for seven years for justice. However, she never lost faith and stayed committed to pursuing justice for educators even delaying her retirement to remain an active employee. Finally, the case was resolved December 20, 2017, with a unanimous ruling by the Michigan Supreme Court that the 3% deduction violated the Michigan State Constitution. As I speak, eligible school employees all over Michigan are receiving their share of the $554 million. Finally, I'd like to thank all of my family and friends who have traveled from other cities in Michigan, Florida, Georgia, Texas, and California. Thank you all, the school employees who work every day to provide the best to our students across Michigan. To Debbie, you are her heroes. God be with you on your travels back home, and may God bless all of us when we depart this evening. On behalf of Deborah McMillan, Charles McMillan, can we stand and give him a big standing ovation? I want to say, share this, that um, I think this has been an incredible night. And come on, celebrate it. And I am so thirsty. Are you thirsty? <laughs> Doesn't my wife look beautiful? Can you celebrate my baby? Doesn't she look wonderful? She's thirsty, but she looks beautiful. Oh, goodness. <laughs> I am thirsty though, my lips keep sticking together. All right, this is the big one, who's ready? Is anybody ready for the big one? The giant among giants. I am so excited. 
The Bible tells us that we shall know them by their fruit. This year's giant of giants is well known and revered throughout the city of Grand Rapids and beyond for her faithful, visionary, and persuasive leadership, compassion, tenacity, courage, and activism. Raised in Grand Rapids and attended Grand Rapids Public Schools, she has worked tirelessly throughout her life to advocate for social justice and equality for all citizens of this community. Through her tireless efforts, fearless and influential voice, she has been instrumental in creating many changes and opportunities for women of African American in this community. During the turbulent 1960s, she worked to eliminate racism through her leadership in the YWCA's Young Women Committed to Action Group. She later worked in the Equal Opportunity Department for the City of Grand Rapids for nearly 30 years. She later worked in the Equal Opportunity Department for Grand Rapids for 30 years. Her work as the city's contract compliance officer enabled her to build effective relationships to bring about change necessary, not only for women and minority beneficiaries, but for the city as a whole. In the 1980s, she developed the Coalition for Representative Government, primarily African Americans, to address the lack of African American elected officials. Under her leadership, this organization engaged the community and police department on social justice issues, lack of minority participation on public boards, and employment discrimination. They also selected and trained candidates to run for office, raised campaign funds, and assisted in managing campaigns and lead voters registration campaigns, resulting in a significant increase in black elected officials in our community. This year's Giant of Giants was elected to serve on the Board of Trustees for Grand Rapids Community College in 1991. She was re-elected in 1997, 2003, and 2009, consisting of six-year terms, totaling 24 years of service as an elected official. During this time, she served as board chair, vice chair, treasurer, and secretary. She has served on the Grand Rapids Police Chief's Advisory Board, vice chair of the Community Relations Community, Committee, member of the Kent County Black Elected Officials, Mount Mercy Housing Corporation Board of Directors, Grand Rapids Community Foundation, African American Heritage Fund, Grand Rapids Community College Foundation, and the NAACP Executive Board. Whew. <laughs> this year's Giant of Giants is a member of <laughs> Delta Sigma Theta Sorority <laughs> and cares deeply about the needs and opportunities for women. She served as chair and co-chair of the YWCA's Tribute to Women, attracting over 900 guests to honor women who have made significant contributions in their field and community. This effort includes raising funds for YWCA programs for victims of rape, sexual assault, and domestic violence to provide counseling and housing allowance. It all supports the Girls Inc. program for girls ages nine to 18. She has been honored by the NAACP, Strive for Freedom and Equality Walter Bergman Award, YWCA Tribute Award, WW Plummer Humanitarian Award, the United Methodist Community House Triumph Award, and a service award from the Michigan Community College Association, just to name a few. She has also been honored by the Grand Rapids Magazine as one of its 10 leaders with a mission and the first recipient of the Nelson Mandela Presidential Award from the National Organization of Law Enforcement Executives. This year's Giant of Giants is truly known by all of her fruit. She is a woman of triumph courage, achievement, who believes strongly in the virtue of Sankofa. We must reach back, bring others with us. This year's 
giant of giants is none other than Miss Ellen James. I'm seldom lost for words. For those of you who know me, you know I'm seldom lost. Um, I, I want to, first of all, give honor and praises to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because without him, I would not, I would not be here. Um, I want to give honor to um, my pastor and um, our first lady, and the members of my church that are here tonight, if you would just stand for a minute. Come on, y'all, come on, come on, just stand up for a minute. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you. I'll have to tell you real quick, um, I'm on the trustee board at our church, and when this request came through, I said, we don't have that money to do that. I take it back though, I take it back. <laughs> Let me thank the Giants Committee um, for, for this honor. I want to also give honor to my mom and my dad for raising me the way that they did in a Christian home. Um, I'm an only child and I'm a girl so I think my dad wanted to make sure that I had the skills to fend for myself, so to speak, speak up. And I know that the gift that God has given me is the gift of communication. I know that without a doubt. And I have used that over the years. Um, I started out in church and the person that brought me beyond those walls into the community. And I always want to give her acknowledgement because I think it's important to not to forget the people that brought you. And so many people brought, somebody brought all of us. And so I give honor and, and a recognition to Bobby Butler tonight. Bobby was that person who saw something in me that the community, as she would say, the community needed. So she brought me to the city of Grand Rapids. She nurtured me. She carried me on her shoulders. She got me involved in the, the YWCA. I worked one hour a week in the gift shop. That's how I started. And from there, I went to, on to become very, very involved in the YWCA. And in the 60s, that sounds, seems like a very long time ago to you youngsters, but that was where I got my start. I had the pleasure of knowing Mrs. Helen Clater, who was a phenomenal woman. And I got an opportunity to be in her presence, to sit in her home, to have conversation with us. And as the years went on, once people find out that you'll work, they will work you. And I think that I probably have been on India. I think you probably have the record now of boards and committees, but at one time I had that distinction in Grand Rapids. I was on every board. But they were always boards that were involved with people. 
I cared about people. I wanted to see change. And I sit on many boards, many, many boards. I was the only person uh, of color on that board. And I was never satisfied with that. I always wanted to bring somebody with me. I will always, I'm never comfortable just there by myself. If I can bring another person, if I can teach another person, learn another, have another person understand, it's important to me. Because I think when you sit at the table, when decisions are being made, that's what's important. When decisions are made and you are sitting there. So I'm going to just, um, just give you a couple more things and then, I, then I'm going to sit down. Uh, for those of you who know me well, you know that I always have a purpose. I don't mind asking people for money. I really don't. <laughs> But uh, the things that, uh, several things I want to share with you before I sit down. I want you to all become involved in your community. Now, one of the first things I always tell people is what? Vote. I'm not talking about a four-year vote. I'm talking about every time there is an election, go and vote. This is quite elementary. It's very elementary. But I need you to go and vote. I have voted since I was 18 years old. I have only missed one time voting in my life, and that was a protest vote. I decided that I had to declare whatever, and I decided that that was unconstitutional, so I didn't vote. But every other time I have voted, and I, I, that's, that's so important to me. So if there's anybody in here, I know I'm talking to the choir, but if there's anybody in here, I want you to go and register to vote. You talked about. Uh, Gert Croons, who's done a fantastic job in this community getting people registered. <laughs> Appreciate that. She's worked very, very hard. The other thing is, I want you to become involved in something. You can start at a very elementary level, but I want everyone in this audience tonight, promise me that if you're not doing something to make Grand Rapids a better community, that you get involved. Uh, if you don't know of anything that you want to do, please get in touch with me, because I can keep you busy. <laughs> I, the other thing that I want to say to this audience tonight, I want to say to you, be kind to each other. Yes. Be loving to each other. Share with each other because that's so important. Sometimes we make it and we forget about where we've come from. We forget that there are others behind that we have to pull up. And I need you to do that, do that for me tonight. Uh, I'm gonna have to go back for a minute because I did not thank the Giants Committee for this prestigious award. It is very humbling to me um, one of the things that I've been honored in a number of, of instances, but it's so humbling to be honored by your peers. But I'm always thinking of why are they doing this? I do what I do because that's what I do. And that's important to me. But I, I, I do thank the committee for the award. And I'm, I won't go any further because I can talk longer. But I want to leave this with you. It's one of the things that drives me every day. It kind of goes like this. I shall pass through this life but once. Therefore, if there is anything that I can do, any kindness that I can show, let me do it now. Let me not defer it, for I shall not pass this way again. God bless you. Good night. Well, we made it. Outstanding giant. I don't know, that was probably the longest bio. I think you did so many things. So I am so excited to 
um, just be a part of this evening. And I need, I know you all just stood, but I need everyone to stand for these two people who headed this outstanding, outstanding, outstanding evening. Please stand to your feet and please give a huge, huge applause to the chair for this evening and the co-chair, Jennifer and Mike Couch. Jennifer Smith and Mike Couch. Come on, y'all know y'all was calling in for last minute tickets. Y'all can clap bigger than that. Last minute tickets, can I get my cousin in? Let's give them a huge, huge, huge round of applause. Good evening. What an honor it was hosting everyone tonight. I truly appreciated all the phone calls, all the questions. It was really an honor hosting you this evening. I wanted to take time to thank the sponsors again. Without them, this would not be truly the community's event. Can you please give a round of applause to our Giants Committee, if you could please stand. It took a team to put this together. <clears throat> and secondly, we would like to thank our MCs tonight. So everybody, could you please give it up for Jathan and Beverly Austin? And just uh, some quick housekeeping notes. So there will be a networking reception that is right upstairs on the third floor. So there are elevators and escalators uh, to the left or to the right that you're able to attend. And we just want to thank you all for coming out and supporting this event. And we look forward to seeing you at the next Giants event. Thank you and have a great evening. Oh, and one more housekeeping thing. Can we have all the Giant Award winners report to the front of the um, room, please, for photos?